Fareed Zakaria GPS, seen in Sunday morning, 10 Eastern and Pacific. Here's my take. Whatever you thought of President Obama's speech on Afghanistan this week, it is now increasingly clear that the United States is winding down its massive military commitments to the two wars of the last decade. We are out of Iraq and we will soon largely be out of Afghanistan. Osama bin Laden is dead. Al-Qaeda is a shadow of its former self. Threats remain, but they are being handled using special forces and intelligence. So finally, after a decade, we seem to be right-sizing the threat from terrorist groups. Or are we? While we leave the battlefields of the greater Middle East, we are firmly committed to the war on terror at home. What do I mean by that? Well, look at the expansion of federal bureaucracies to tackle this war. Since September 11, 2001, the U.S. government has created or reconfigured at least 263 organizations to tackle some aspect of the war on terror. 33 new building complexes have been built for the intelligence bureaucracies alone, occupying 17 million square feet, the equivalent of 22 U.S. capitals or three pentagons. The largest bureaucracy after the Pentagon and the Department of Veterans Affairs is now the Department of Homeland Security, which has a workforce of 230,000 people. The rise of this national security state has entailed a vast expansion in the government's powers that now touch every aspect of American life, even when seemingly unrelated to terrorism. Some 30,000 people, for example, are now employed exclusively to listen in on phone conversations and other communications within the United States. In the past, the U.S. government has built up for wars, assumed emergency authority, sometimes abused that power, yet always demobilized after the war. But this is, of course, a war without end. So we continue to stand in absurd airport lines, turn down the visa applications of hundreds of thousands of tourists, businessmen, artists, and performers who simply want to visit America and spend money here and become ambassadors of goodwill for this country. We continue to treat even those visitors who arrive with visas as hostile aliens, checking, searching, and deporting people from airports at will. We continue to place new procedures and rules to monitor everything that comes in and out of the country, making doing business in America less attractive and more burdensome than in most Western countries. We don't look like people who have won a war. We look like scared, fearful losers.